With GCSEs around in with GCSEs in around a month, I found some of the most difficult questions from the previous exams so we can have a go at them because the more you practice these difficult questions, the easier it can be to aim for those top grades. So let's get on with it. Here's the first question. Now in this question, we have a circle and there's a tangent to it, AB. It's a tangent to the circle. We have angle OBA is given as 30 degrees. The point B has the coordinates of 16, 0. We have the point P which lies on the circle with coordinates of 3P and P. And we are told to find the value of P to one decimal place. So, first of all, whenever we see a tangent meet in a circle, remember our circle theorems. They will always meet at a right angle. So here is a right angle. Now we can make a triangle with this triangle OAB. If we draw it out to the side and tilt it a bit, we're going to get this. So we just label the sides B, A and O. Now we can see the length of O to B is going to be 16 because of the coordinate of B. Because we're going from 16 to 0, 0. So this length is 16. Now what we want to find is OA as OA is also the radius of the circle. And we can see that P is also equal to the radius of the circle as P and A both lie on the circle, which means they are both radius of the circle. So we can use trigonometry to just find this length OA. So let's label our side. We have H, the hypotenuse is being 16. We have the adjacent as A and opposite O. So which formula do we use here? Let's write them out. Now we have H and we're trying to find O. So therefore we're going to use this formula. So it's opposite is equal to sine of the angle, which is 30, multiplied by H, which is 16. Now if we put that in a calculator, we're going to get this length as 8, so OA is equal to 8. Now let's just get rid of these lines that I've drawn on. So we have this length as equal to 8. This is also going to be equal to 8 then, as we already said, it's just the radius of the circle. So now if we get rid of this, we can go on to try and find P. So if we look at P, we draw length like this, we can see that here's another right angle. So we can draw another right angle triangle with the coordinates. Okay, it has eight. Now it's 3P across. So it's going to have this side 3P and its height is P. So we have a right angle triangle with all the sides labeled. So this is obviously going to involve Pythagoras as we can, as we have the right angle triangle and all the sides given. So, so we just say a squared plus b squared is going to be equal to c squared. Now a squared is 3p all squared, b squared is p all squared. So if we just put that in, remember to put brackets around the whole thing, not just around the p. 3p all squared plus p squared is equal to c squared, which is 8. Simplifying this, we're going to get 9p squared plus p squared is equal to 64. We get 10p squared is equal to 64. If we divide both sides by 10, we're going to get p squared is equal to 6.4. Now, to get p on its own, we're just going to take the square root of both sides, giving us P as equal to square root of 6.4. And the question asks us to give it as a decimal to one decimal place. So we put that in our calculator, giving us 2.5 as P. And that's all you need to do. So in this question, we have a curve P with equation Y is equal to two lots of X minus one, all squared minus five. Now this is reflected in the y-axis to give us curve Q. And we are told to find out what this equation is for curve Q. So, 
First, we can just draw some coordinates, a coordinate axis. So we just want to get an idea of what reflecting in the y-axis actually does. So let's just draw any equation, any normal quadratic. Here's an example of a quadratic. Now, I know this is not P, but it'll have the same effect reflecting in the y-axis. So if we reflect in the y-axis, let's draw a line here. Let's take a point. This point is going to be moved, let's say, one across. It's going to be reflected one across to the other side. It's going to move to here. This point is going to move a bit across to here. This point, let's say it moves x across, then it's going to move x across here. And when we reflect this, so these points are going to all move over here. Now, once this is all moved over, the reflected graph will look something like this. Now, if you notice, what is the similarity between these two graphs? It is when we have an x coordinate, x, y, and it's reflected, then it's just going to it's going to have the same y value. However, the x value is going to just become the negative of that. So the x values are turning to negative x. And that is true for any reflection in the y-axis. That's all that's happening. Your x coordinates are going from positive to negative or the other way around. So now that we know what this does, we can get rid of this. And to get the equation of q, all we need to do is replace the x with minus x. So we have y equals minus two, minus two lots of minus x minus one, all squared minus five. Now we just expand this. Remember when squaring a bracket, you have to multiply it by itself, not just square each term, giving us x squared plus one. You don't do that. Now we can expand this bracket by doing this, multiplying out like this, so we get minus x times minus x is positive x squared, minus x times minus 1 is plus x, minus 1 again, plus times minus x is going to be plus x, and minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. Now we can just simplify this, giving us 2x squared, these two x's, these x's are going to add up to become 2x, so we multiply it by 2, 4x plus 2 times 1 is 2 minus 5. So our equation for q is just y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. And that's our final answer.